Hey crafting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in to share my top 10 tips for getting started with paint by number. I have had so much fun with my paint by numbers lately, and I'm really excited to share what I've learned with you here today. Let's get started. Now the first tip I have for you is to always choose a reputable company when you're choosing your paint by number kit. Today I'm working on a pro kit from Crafties called The Virgin by Gustav Klimt. This canvas was sent to me for review and I found it to be outstanding quality. The thing I love the most about Crafties is that they support independent artists by licensing their work directly. A lot of paint by numbers have the same issue that a lot of diamond paintings have in that unlicensed work is everywhere, it's pervasive, but Crafties works to promote an independent artist every time you make a purchase, which I think is amazing. They also have a great selection, and this Pro Kit comes with so many perks. I'll show them to you here. This canvas comes pre-mounted on stretcher bars, so it's easy to work on. It comes with a great selection of really creamy, colorful paints. I've had a delightful time working with those. It comes with a set of 10 artist brushes, in addition to the usual wooden handled brushes that you might get in a paint by number kit. And they also tucked in a reference guide, which is essential for any paint by number kit, and a surprise scratch art kit down nestled in the bottom of my box, which was a super nice surprise. Best of all, this box actually folds up and turns into an easel so that you can work at an angle while you're painting your kit. I have really had a great experience with this. And Crafties was kind enough to send along a discount code for all of my lovely friends out there. So click the link in the description below if you'd like to get your own paint by number kit. That is an affiliate link, so I do get a small commission when you use it. But hey, you're helping a girl pay her student loans, which is greatly appreciated. My second tip is to prep your tools before you start. You can see here that I'm labeling my paint pots using the legend that came in my kit and the stickers that came for the lid of each paint pot. I'm just matching the number on the legend to the paint pot and putting the appropriate sticker on. You're also going to need a basin for clean water. I happen to have a brush basin here, but any container like a solo cup, a jar, a cereal bowl would work just fine. You're also going to want to grab a paper towel for blotting. And I sometimes like to have a set of these small plastic paint trays, and I prefer to work out of those on some kits, but I actually found as I went along on this kit that working out of my paint pots was super convenient. So those are an optional tool you might wish to have. My third tip is to take some time prepping your canvas before you get started. Now, I sometimes like to prime my canvases with clear gesso, not white gesso, that'll cover up your numbers, but clear gesso just to give the canvas a little bit more tooth. I actually didn't do that on this canvas and it worked out just fine. The quality of the canvas on this one was really great, but if you're serious about paint by numbers, that might be something you want to invest in. I also recommend swatching your colors on the outside borders of your canvas. In this case, I used the back side of my canvas to swatch my colors. I just numbered them one through 24 and then put a little sample of each color on the back just so I could see how opaque or translucent they were and how many coats I might need to cover up my numbers on the front of my canvas. This is kind of an optional step, but I find it to be really, really useful in getting to know your paints and getting to know your colors. Now, as you get started painting, you might find that your paints are really, really thick. These paints actually are quite delightful and creamy, but if your paints are a little bit too thick or you need to work in really small detail areas, adding a couple of drops of clean water or clean water with just a tiny touch of dish soap can really thin your paints and make them a little bit more workable. I found this especially helpful when I was working on really small details on my canvas. I found that using the thinner paint to work in those details with a small brush and then working with full bodied paint on the center of my areas 
gave me good coverage over my numbers, and still let me have a lot of control in those small areas. Now when I'm painting, I like to start with my largest sections first. Sometimes companies recommend that you start with your light colors first and then fill in your dark colors around the edges. I actually find that I prefer to work in my largest area, regardless of what color that might be, and then come in with my small details as I'm working on each section. But as you work on your paint by number, you'll find the method that is most comfortable for you and works the best for you. Modern paint by numbers can be very different from the paint by numbers of the 1950s. They're very detailed, have very small painting areas, and so it takes a little bit of practice to find your own technique and to get comfortable with the paints if you've never painted before. Just go easy on yourself, find a technique that works for you, and you're gonna be obsessed with paint by number, I'm positive. As I was working, I also found that I preferred to outline my sections first and then fill them in second, especially with my largest areas. And I did find that several of my colors, mainly the blues, the purples, and some of the oranges, did take two or even three coats to cover the numbers fully. I think that's pretty normal for paint by numbers if your printing is pretty clear. So I started with one coat, moved on to some other areas, and then came back and filled in those second coats if needed. I did find that I like to work in smaller sections, sort of according to the images that were on the canvas, rather than working only in one direction all the time. So that allowed me to sort of focus on finishing one section before I moved on to the next. I did find that in planning what section to work on, it was helpful to work from left to right generally because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it may work better for you to work from right to left so you don't end up sticking the side of your palm in your wet paint as you go along and touch up your sections. I found that working toward my dominant hand really helped to avoid getting paint all over my hands and sleeves. And so that's a tip that you might wanna to try too. Now generally you can use all the tools that come in your paint by number kit without purchasing extras, but I think if you're really interested in doing a couple of paint by numbers, it really makes sense to invest in a couple of good quality artist paint brushes. It isn't a scalable enterprise for paint by number companies to include top quality brushes in all of their kits. And while I found that the brushes in this kit work just fine, I was glad that I had a couple of good quality artist brushes in my stash with good stiff synthetic bristles. My favorite sizes are a two slash zero and a three slash zero round. I find that I can thin my paint and get into a lot of detail areas with those brushes without it taking forever to fill my larger areas. Like I said, those aren't a necessity, but if you really find that you love paint by numbers, having a good quality set of your own brushes might be a great investment for you. Now remember that your paint by number is your own personal masterpiece. So if you wanna change up colors, if you want to blend some sections by dry brushing, if you wanna add some brush strokes or some other painterly effects to your canvas, do it. It's your piece, it's gonna hang on your wall. You might as well take the time to personalize it and enjoy it. One thing I think I might try on this canvas when I get it wrapped up is to actually add some metallic gold paint or some gold leaf on some of my detail areas. Since Klimt was a lover of gold leaf, I think that might be especially appropriate on this canvas. Another cool thing you might try if you're a diamond painter is using some dot stick to add some of those leftover drills we're always wondering what to do with to your paint by number kit. Maybe jeweling up some pieces of clothing or accenting some areas would be fun. But whatever you choose to do, just remember to make your kit your own so that you can be proud of it for years to come. And last but not least, remember, these paint by numbers are very complex. They're gonna take a lot of time, but I think that is the best part of a craft kit. When you invest in a really good quality kit, you want it to take some time. You wanna be able to put on your cup of tea and your audiobook and just sit and enjoy it night after night. 
And you guys, that's what I've been doing on this beautiful kit for the last couple of weeks. It has been one of the most memorable crafting experiences I've had in a long time. So if you'd like to grab your own crafties paint by number, remember to check out the discount code in the description below. You guys know that I never promote a product on the channel unless I'm really passionate about it. And I have had a fantastic time painting this kit. I can't wait to show you the final result. I am so excited about how colorful and detailed it has turned out to be. Thanks so much for checking out the video today. If you're interested in more crafting content, everything from cross stitch to diamond painting to adult coloring books and more, please subscribe to the channel. I have new content every week and you're always welcome to stop by. As always, spread some joy wherever you are today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.